Chad Robichaud's new book is titled Saving Aziz. It is the story of the Afghan interpreter who joined him on over a hundred dangerous Marine missions and then the fight to save him and his family from the Taliban after the botched pullout. It is an honor to welcome back Chad Robichaud and Aziz. Welcome both of you. Thank you sir. So glad Thank to have you, you both. Thanks. Chad, I want to start. How many tours did you do in Afghanistan in all? So I was a force recon Marine. I was assigned to JSOC, Joint Special Operations Command Task Force. And uh, I did eight deployments to Afghanistan as an advanced force operator, doing all the clandestine logistics to get on target. So when you heard that we were pulling out of Afghanistan, uh, immediate reaction? My immediate reaction was uh, it was it was going to be a disaster to do that and, and leave the most strategic place, place in the globe between Iraq, Iran, Russia, and China. Uh, although my, my most severe concern was my friend. Uh, Aziz did eight deployments with me to Afghanistan. in Afghanistan. He was my friend. He saved my life multiple times. Uh, I'm close to his family. I was there when his kids were born. So leaving my friend behind was something I knew uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't let happen. You know, a lot of us heard the stories of uh, Afghan interpreters mm -hmm. who deployed with our own troops, translated, protected, mm -hmm. gave source information, helped risk their lives for you. I mean, there's no way that he could have done this without risking his life and being targeted for helping the Americans. So when it became clear that we were going to just leave these folks behind, people that had been promised that they would be able to get to the United States with their families, yeah. you had to have been not just frustrated, but angry. I was, I was angry. I was, I was scared for my friend because uh, his life's important to me. His wife and six kids' life's important to me. And uh, I knew, uh, you know, if the government wasn't going to do the right thing, that uh, I knew I could call in friends that would come get behind me and help me do the right thing, and you know, it was to go and get him. So you just, you, but this time you're a civilian. Yes. And you're calling up some of your former military buddies and saying, we're going to go get some of those guys that helped us. That's right. I mean, where do you start doing something like that? Well, I have a lot of great friends from the special operations community. I uh, had a lot of experience to do this kind of thing. And uh, we put together a team of about 12 of us. And as we were preparing to go get Aziz, we realized that the mission was bigger, that more people, Americans, other interpreters, uh, women and children would need help. And uh, we, were, we were all very strong people of faith, and we felt God burn our heart to do something bigger. And uh, we simply made a decision to be obedient to that calling, say yes, and then we watched God perform a miracle to allow us not only to save Aziz and his wife and six kids, but 17,000 other people. 17,000. Wow. Aziz, when you heard that the Americans were pulling out, did at first you say, oh, well, they'll come get me, and then we'll go out with them? Was that your thought, or did you think they were going to leave you there? Well, um, to be honest with you, at first I didn't take it serious because I was really counting on the Afghan National Army, the police, the special forces, the zero units that were trained by the U.S. military, equipped with lots of heavy machine guns, ammunition. But unfortunately, since the country collapsed politically from the top leadership, and that was the time that I was really st uh, struggling, and anxiety kicked in, nervousness, depression. I was came, uh, becoming weaker and weaker from inside. Although Chad was uh, making jokes with me and he would read a prayer uh, from the Bible over me through the phone and tell me that he's holding prayers for me in the churches. And uh, still, there was uh, a fear of that I will be uh, left behind. I didn't uh, believe that uh, it will happen that quick because there was a limited uh, amount of time. We didn't have enough time and everything happened overnight. And uh, I had no other place to go. My, my relatives turned their face at me, my parents, my siblings, everyone uh, told me that uh, you're not coming to my house. It's your call, you did it, now you handle it. So uh, all uh, I had was uh, to bow on my knees and pray. And I prayed uh, in the name of Jesus. And he answered and he sent my brother. Wow. And uh, I mean, what a great, amazing story of this guy who did not forget you, but it had to be terrifying for you and your family. And what did you do, just hunker down in your home and hope Chad shows up here pretty soon? 
Uh, actually, uh, the first few nights uh, when the uh, bad guys captured the 30, uh, three provinces of Afghanistan, only the capital was remaining. So I had these AKs and pistols and some grenades and ammunitions. I distributed my gun in different corners of the house. I told my wife, if they come from this angle, you're shooting from this angle. And I told my older son that if they come from the other angle, you're using this as a checkpoint and you just pull the trigger, it's locked and loaded and just keep shooting. And my older daughter and the same thing for my Myself. I was living in a five-story concrete house. I made these different checkpoints and I was anticipating using my military experience and I was getting my readiness. But as soon as uh, we noticed that uh, the bad guys captured the whole uh, capital as well, then I had to get out of my house, live inside the taxi with my ch six children. My wife had an appendix operation. Her wounds are infected. You know, we are, uh, Chad's buddies are inside the airport. They are sending me the Google Maps to make it to the airport. Uh, but we are not able to make it because uh, there is Taliban checkpoints in the outer perimeter. The middle uh, perimeter is uh, controlled by the Afghan ex-military uh, guys. And then inside there is U.S. Marines. And every time I attempt to make it inside the airport, they are shooting at me. The Taliban are shooting at me. Once I cross that checkpoint, then the, the, the zero units, the Afghan ex-military guys, they are shooting at me. As soon as I pass them, then the U.S. military or these young Marines, they are shooting at me. I'm like, hey, I'm a U.S. ally. These are my documents. I cannot show it to you. My wife is, uh, you know, she did the appendix operation. Please let me to get in. I worked for Chad Robert Show. Do you know him? Please Google him. He's a famous man. They're like, no, no, we don't know you. Go. You're not supposed to be here. They're shooting and shooting. And then finally, one day I quit because my wife is crying. And I told Chad, it's not possible. So uh, Chad had to tell the team guys that they need to come outside the Constantina wire and find us, find and us in the Chad, crowd in his quarters. Your guys went in and got him. I can only imagine when the two of you reconnected, what an emotional moment that must have been for you, but for Aziz and his family. What an incredible story. And you tell it in the book, Saving Aziz. It's, it's, if there ever was a story that needs to be a movie, this is it. It's got to be. And if you want to get the book, Saving Aziz and more, if you go to Huckabee.tv, we will connect you to this amazing story of heroism and raw courage.